new information on the most high profile case of felony child abuse in recent history. The Gore case in Gloucester County goes to trial on Tuesday, but new documents have surfaced, and Andy Fox has them. We've been following this case since the gruesome discovery in April 2011. A six year old girl found in a crib made into a cage. She was starving and near death. Andy joins us now with more on these new developments. Nicole and Tom, we went to Gloucester County today. The Gores will be in court next week. Documents outline Shannon Gore's attorney, Ron Smith, making every effort to get the now eight year old daughter into court so he can question her. <laughs> December 2008, Brian Gore proposes to Shannon. A sweet moment shared by a couple living a lie. Investigators say Shannon's mother, Karen, told us in May 2011. If somebody wants to hide something from you, they can do it. Obviously, I've, I've learned that lesson. Karen says she never knew about the six-year-old daughter, investigators say, was found in the Gore's mobile home, kept in this crib, made into a cage. The floor still stained from the daughter living in her own feces, fed Pop-Tarts, eating the peeling skin from her forehead. Shannon Gore's attorney, Ron Smith, wants the child, who is now eight, to be summoned to court. Shannon Gore's motion offered by Smith, the Commonwealth's attorney, will introduce photographs of the child that will depict her in a state of shocking and extreme weight loss. However, the child has gained substantial weight and is presently overweight. Smith wants the daughter, who now has a new name and new parents, to appear before jurors to show how the damage was not permanent and that could help in sentencing. What will be amazing, though, is to find out why Shannon and Brian Gore kept their daughter in the living conditions investigators say they did. Shannon, how could you have done this? Yes. And her answer? Her answer is usually just tears. I don't think she has a, a, a really truly believe she doesn't have an understanding. After the hearing earlier this month to disclose the eight-year-old's identity and bring her to court, Judge Bruce Long decided the court denies the child appear in court, denies the child's identity be released. But hold on. Circuit Judge Bruce Long made his decision the daughter would not have to appear in court on February 11th. That's when he made his decision. That would end up not as Long's final decision when he realized there were constitutional problems with his first decision. Judge Long has to reverse himself. The daughter will have to appear in court, and I'll have that part of the story coming up tonight on Wavy News 10 at 6. I'm Andy Fox, 10 on your side.